Hey y'all, welcome back to another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. It's time for another versus video. Today I've got Hornady Superformance, both the 150 and 165 grain SST loads out of the 308 Winchester. And here are your boxes for that Hornady Superformance 308 Winchester 150 and 165 grain SST loads. Nice looking boxes, if nothing else. Let's flip it around to the back. Here is your Superformance promo info. Feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like. Their big claim is that this stuff should be going 100 to 200 feet per second faster than standard ammo. It'll be interesting to see if that is the case. And flipping it around to your ammo numbers, the 150 grain load is billed at 3,000 feet per second. The 165 is billed at 2840. And just for this little velocity comparison, I'm going to bring back out a load that I just recently tested. This is Hornady Custom 150 grain SST. So sort of a sister load to the 150 Superformance. And let's look at the velocity spec here. So this claims 2820 versus the 3000 feet per second of the Superformance. So it'll be interesting to see what this winds up actually being because as per the boxes, we're looking at an extra 180 feet per second. And we'll go ahead and open this up and take a look at the ammo itself. I'm just going to do the 150s because they're identical to the 165s. They just come in a black plastic ammo holder. Let's whip one out. There it is, your classic red SST bullet. Let's go shoot this stuff and see how it does. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Standard, chambered in 308 Winchester, of course. It has a 22-inch barrel. I did have it threaded so I could use a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 suppressor. And coming on back, I've got it topped off with a Vortex Diamondback 4 to 16 by 42 scope. Definitely helps see the gel blocks down there. And of course, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs on the buttstock. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would love to make you one. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings on there. Those are also available on my website. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my whitetail deer design. And check out the brand new Shop the Mason Outdoor Store feature below this video. If you don't have YouTube Premium, just scroll down a bit to find it. I've built a brand new website, masonoutdoors.com, where you can get all my favorite range gear and outdoor equipment. Everything you see, I personally use and can recommend with confidence. And every purchase helps me bring you more YouTube videos. Click the items below or visit my website masonoutdoors.com to get all my favorite gear that I think you'll love too. Links are in the video description and the pinned comment. Now, back to the video. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are the velocities for that 150 grain Superformance SST load out of the 308. These things are cooking right along. We almost hit 3,000 feet per second. Not quite though. We had a minimum of 2942, a max of 2953 for an average of 2946. And look at that spread, only 11.6 feet per second. And here is the velocity data for the 165 grain version of that same load. Minimum of 2781, max of 2790 for an average of 2785. And once again, the spread was only 8.8 .8 feet per second, very tight. And we'll get more in depth with velocity here in a second. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting those 150 grain and 165 grain Hornady Superformance SST loads out of the 308. We captured all three of the 150s and all three of the 165s. And these things fling these front blocks around like nothing I have ever seen in terms of sort of a mid-range standard deer caliber, you know, 270, 30 out 6, 308. These things pick these front blocks up and just throw them. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at penetration. For the 150s, very, very consistent penetration. 
I'm going to call all three of them at 21 and a half inches. They're all right there in that range. It looks like we did get some really good mushrooming and expansion there. It doesn't look like they broke up too bad. The block is kind of cloudy on the surface because it kept fleeing around on the ground. It has dust and stuff on it, but there's not a whole ton of shards or you know jacket that broke up in here. It seems like they held together for the most part. I'm sure some broke off, but not as much as I would have expected. And for the 165s, we had a little bit of variance in penetration. Looks like we got one at 22 and a half inches, one right at 23 inches, and then one all the way back at 26 inches. So all of them went well past the 20 inch mark that I like to see. These also look like they mushroomed pretty nicely and held together for the most part. Coming over to the first block, it's tough to see again because it's all cloudy. This thing flung on the ground several times, but there is a little bit of fragmentation in here, not a whole ton. And the wound tracks for both the 150s and 165s are very similar, very, very rapid expansion, about the one inch mark. Big blow up, about the seven inch mark, it starts to taper off a little bit, and then it's tapered off completely by the 12 inch mark. Almost exactly the same for the 150s. So let's go ahead and dig them out and take a look. All right, y'all, so we've got the bullets dug out of the gel. Let's go ahead and go over all the metrics. First, we'll hit weight retention. For the 150 grain SSTs, we saw 100, 103, and 105 grains for an average of 103 grains retained weight and that works out to 68% weight retention. For the 165 grain SSTs we saw 114, 114, and 115 grains for an average of about 114 grains retained weight which works out to 69% weight retention, so nearly identical weight retention percentage-wise. And honestly, quite on par with what I would expect from the SST bullet. It's not bonded, it's not meant to hold together, it's meant to deliver a punch, and that's what this stuff did. Now on to expansion. For the 150s, we saw 0.57, 0.66, and 0.79 inches for an average of 0.67 inches expanded diameter, and that works out to 2.2x expansion. And for the 165s, we saw 0.59, 0 0.75, and 0.77 inches for an average of 0 0.70 inches expanded diameter, which is 2.3x expansion, so nearly identical expansion between both bullet weights. And also take a look at the photo of the bullets here. The expansion on these things was very uniform. They stayed concentric, nice good mushrooms to punch on through. They did shed quite a bit of their weight, but what was left performed very well. Now on to velocity. Now remember, this is the Superformance line of ammo, so we should be seeing some nice high velocities. For the 150s, the high velocity was 2954. The low was 2942, nice tight spread there for an average of 2947 versus the factory build velocity of 3000 feet per second. Now we didn't quite hit that 3000 feet per second mark, but we weren't too far off. We were 53 feet per second slow on average. I've seen a heck of a lot worse than that. And then for the 165s, we saw 2790 for the high, 2781 for the low. So again, very tight spread for an average of 2786 versus the factory build velocity of 2840. So 54 feet per second slow on average, nearly identical to the 150s in terms of how much slower they are than factory spec. And I was shooting these again through a 22 inch barrel which by far the most common barrel length for hunting rifles in 308 Winchester is 22 inches or shorter. The factories are using longer barrels. Why? Well, I do know why. It's to trump up the numbers on the box and make it seem like you're getting more velocity, but when you measure it out of realistic hunting rifles, that's just not what you get. And yeah, I know there's 24 inch and 26 inch barrel 308s out there, nowhere near the norm. And now real quick, we'll hit impact velocity. So how fast were these bullets going at 100 yards when they actually impacted the ballistics gel or if it was a deer or something down there, how fast are they actually going at 100 yards? Now these numbers are estimates based off a mathematical formula using factory input, so it's gonna be pretty darn close, but it is an estimate. For the 150 grain bullet, the impact velocity would be about 2,741 feet per second. Pretty darn fast, that Superformance load does trump up the velocity quite a bit over a standard custom load from Hornady. You're getting quite a bit more velocity. And then for the 165s, the impact velocity is gonna be about 2,591 feet per second down there at 100 yards. Just something to know.
Now on to penetration. For the 150s, this was incredible. The same across the board. 21 and a half inches for all three bullets. Exactly the same. Pretty darn good performance. That's past the 20 inch mark that I like to see for your medium game, you know, white tail deer hunting ammo. And then for the 165s, we did see a little bit more penetration. We had 22 and a half, 23 and 26 inches for an average of about 24 inches of penetration. It's nice to see the slightly heavier bullet going a little bit deeper. That's what you would expect and that's exactly what we got. And then kinetic energy wise, for the 150 grain load, going on average 2,947 feet per second, we're looking at 2,892 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. This stuff is a sledgehammer for 308 Winchester. It packs a serious punch. And then for the 165s, going on average 2,786 feet per second, we're looking at 2,843 foot-pounds at the muzzle. Way up there. This is some hot loaded 308. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on the Hornady Superformance SST loads out of the 308 Winchester, both the 150 and 165 grain loads. By and large, the performance was very similar between both of them. Weight retention was almost identical percentage wise. Expansion was once again nearly identical. Go back, look at the photo of the bullets. They all look pretty much the same. Velocity, of course, the 150s are going to go a bit faster. Neither one was extremely slow versus box spec. I've seen a lot worse. I'm pretty darn happy with it. The big differentiator between the two bullet weights, the two different loads, and it's really not even that big of a difference, is the penetration. The difference on average only being two and a half inches. The 150s got us to 21 and a half inches of penetration. The 165s got us to 24 inches on average with a little bit of variability there. So all in all, I think these things did pretty darn good for a medium game hunting load. I wouldn't hesitate to use them on whitetail deer, pronghorn, stuff like that. I think you could make the argument to use them on stuff even bigger. Personally, I wouldn't. I would want something a little bit different. I think there's loads that cater themselves better towards larger game in 308 Winchester. But for your standard medium game hunting, either one of these would do very well. And if it came down to it, I would just use whichever one shot better to my rifle. There's not a big enough difference between the 150s and 165s for the bullet weight itself or how they performed to sway my decision. It would just be whichever one shot more accurately in my particular rifle, which seems to be a trend with these versus videos where I'm comparing the same bullet but just different bullet weights in the same caliber, with a little bit of exception here and there. So what did you think about these loads? Would you use them? Would you pick something else? Let me and everybody else know down in the comments. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website, so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also, tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping, as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment, or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.